What up, y'all? I'm sitting on the couch, holding my Sony ZV-E1 Plus 16 to 35 millimeter F4 PZ-G. And, you know, a lot of people have a lot to say about this little camera, Sony ZV-E1. Some of y'all feel like it's gimmicky. Some of y'all feel like it's overpriced. And on some of those things, I do agree. And it's also not perfect. And there's also arguably better cameras out there for the money. I'm not in disagreement with any of those things, right? But this combo in specific is such a fire combo. And this is the combo that I've been waiting on as a content creator who films himself, who is a snob about image quality and autofocus and all those things. This is really, really the camera that I've been waiting on. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Not specifically a review, but reasons why this combo is perfect for my needs. The, uh, the the shop because I got a nail in my tire and I'm too freaking lazy to pull it and plug the tire myself. But anyways, I know this camera is outside of the ballpark than what most people can afford. Okay, I, I'm totally understanding that, and it is expensive. If you get this camera and lens together, you're looking at about three grand. Dang. So the first thing I need to say is I understand that not everybody can afford to buy one. I hope you can. If you can't, one day, but. I guess I'm talking to the people who can't afford it. Uh, so I, I think even for the money that this combo is powerful, very powerful. And my first reason why, and this is more specific to the ZVE, one is the built-in mic. Right now we're on the street corner, pretty much. The shop is on the street corner. And I'm using the built-in mic, so that means it's cars passing by, it's loud, it's wind noise. And um, for a built-in mic, this thing sounds amazing. Obviously it's not gonna replace like a shot. <clears throat> Excuse me, what was that? It's not gonna replace like a shotgun mic or anything like that, but in a pinch, it's really, really good. And uh, that's one of my favorite things about it. I don't always have to worry about putting a mic on it and rigging it up and all that stuff. I can just take it out the bag, film my clip, and move on. So throughout the day, I'm gonna be, you know, taking y'all with me, dropping things I love about this combo. But first thing, audio. I promise you, all they wanna eat all day, every day, is this, ramen noodles. Why do you like eating these so much? Because they good. Because they delicious, ain't they? I've been eating these since college. Still amazing. Do you want noodles or pizza rolls? Pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. All right. Yo, have y'all ever had watermelon with lemon squeezed on top of it? Now, one of the other reasons I really love this combo, Germany on noodles already, is because this lens Auto is an F4, which we're gonna talk about that. Has power zoom. So it's got a lever on the side of it. The ZVE1 also has a zoom rocker. So with that, you can zoom in and out, which is fire, right? But you can even zoom all the way through clear image zoom. So you can start at 16 and go all the way to like, I don't know, 35 and then plus the clear image zoom. But the dope part is you don't lose any type of tracking or anything with clear image, which is not high. Say hi. Why must you make that face? No, I'll grab that. You're gonna burn your freaking hands off. So, but um, you don't lose track of this stuff like you would with Sony's other cameras. Um, it's only like two other cameras that don't lose tracking with clear image. So I really love the zoom lever. Also, if you're into taking like selfies or self videos, if you use the creators app, see this dirty, <laughs> dirty oven man. With the creators app, you can zoom in and out from the app itself. So if you put the camera down and frame yourself, you don't like it, you can zoom in or zoom out, which you cannot do with a zoom that's not power zoom. So those are really, really powerful features of the ZV-E1. Hey, Miss Parker. Supposed to do the Friday, hey. No? Whatever. Damn. All right, before I continue to get this camera, all of these praises, I gotta tell you all the things that really freaking annoy me, because there are a few things about the ZV-E1, not specifically the lens, but the ZV-E1, that really annoy me. First of all, a lot of y'all know that I, I sold my FX3, or traded it, I should say, for that bad boy over there, that bike over there, okay? So coming from the FX3 to the ZV-E1, it's my everyday video camera. The lack of buttons really annoys me. Okay, now the ZV-E1 does have all the controls on the screen and all that good stuff, but 
it's, it's, it's an adjustment, you know what I'm saying? The other thing is overheating. Now, I personally don't run into overheating because I usually film shorter clips. I'm not outside in Arizona filming in 150 degree freaking heat, but it is a consideration. And the third thing about it is it is very, very cheap filling. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. We'll talk about that as a pro also later on in the video. But for $2,300, the camera absolutely feels freaking cheap. But with that being said, one of my favorite things about this combo, first of all, is how wide this lens is. Second of all, dynamic stabilization. So I am not trying to hold this steady at all. I'm just holding the camera out in front of me. And as long as you got a lens that's wide enough, man, even with the crop dynamic, it's not that, it's not that bad. And it works really, really good unless you're doing like fast action running and stuff like that. Then you can see digital artifacted. But the active stabilization is real good. Dynamic stabilization for people who care about stabilization. I know some of y'all don't, but I do. As somebody who hates gimbals, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like dynamic stabilization, active stabilization, the fact that it records gyro data is, I mean, in a little camera like this, it's really, really good. I got a whole lot more though. Let's go. I want to introduce y'all to the most annoying dog in history, and yes, I need to cut the grass. This is Macho. Macho needs a haircut, number one. He is super, super full of fur right now, but he's the most annoying dog in history, and right now he's trying to catch squirrels. Hey, come here. Hey. But... I would you come over here, bro? I'm trying to use you for an example. Listen, all of Sony's new cameras have amazing autofocus the zve1 ain't no different um it's got the ai stuff in it so it can detect planes trains automobiles human pose estimation bro you really need a haircut and terry you really need to cut this freaking grass but it does all of that stuff okay let's go ahead and follow him see what he up to but yeah the autofocus is like not even something to get excited about anymore and i'm sorry y'all have to look at his butt but <laughs> But it's so good on Sony cameras. He's trying to run from me. Come here, boy. Come here, bro. He's trying to run. A little overexposed. Hold up. But the autofocus is so good now. It's like, this is what we expect. And when it's not this good, that's what the problem is. So, yeah, anyways, the ZVE1 autofocus, fantastic. And there he goes. All right, let's try to shoot some B roll while talking. It's about to be a lot more difficult than you might think. Terry, I thought you was an f1.2 snob or f2.8 snob when it came to zoom lenses. I am. So how you gonna get an f4 then? Well, to be honest, it hasn't been that big of a deal. So the first thing is when it comes to background blur, with an f4 lens on a full frame, I'm not really looking for depth of field out of a wide angle lens. 16 millimeter, I'm not trying to get a blurry background, but even if you were to punch in a 35 millimeter, you could still get some pretty blurry stuff especially if you get close to the subject okay so that's the first thing the second thing is yeah the f2.8 gangster mode is nice but for me the benefits of the smaller one the g1 outweigh the quote unquote disadvantage of being an f4 lens so it's smaller it's lightweight it's got power zoom it's got an aperture ring on it which all the sony lenses do but my point is is like I would much prefer have this as my main lens because of power zoom and because of the size, okay? So let's talk about low light capability because that's where F4 really, I guess is a problem, right? So it's not really a problem. I just got bumped by my wife. She just messed up the total flow of the video, but it's okay. So ZV-E1 has the same sensor as the FX3, A7S3, and FX6. So. That means that it can literally see in the freaking dark. Now I use this camera for my main channel and both of my secondary channels. And one of my secondary channels is a new channel with me and my dude Abe called Switch of Gear. So it's a motorcycle channel. So we film a lot of stuff at night. And being able to have my second base ISO at 12,800 has actually been clutch because we film everything at night. So being able to still have tons of dynamic range, all of that stuff, when filming at 12,800 ISO is game changing for me. Now, image quality wise, again, it's the same freaking sensor as the FX3, A7S3, FX6. So I'm getting cinema quality video, the same codec stack, bit rates, resolutions as the other cameras and the small pocket rocket style camera. So this combination together, F4 lens on the ZV-E1 is actually really, really acceptable for 
or your general purpose video content creation. All right, I'm actually gonna stay on image quality resolutions and stuff like that for a second because while I was trying to do that B-roll thing, I forgot to say this, okay? And I'm outside and there's clouds passing the sun, so white balance might be changing, exposure might be changing, and that's all good. That's what we do when we vlog, okay? Having a camera this small that can give me 4K 24, 4K 30, 4K 60 uncropped, and also 4K 120 with minimal crop and very, 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 very <laughs> good rolling shutter performance and also still have an S-Log 3, 10-bit, 422, all that stuff. Again, and the camera this small and lightweight is, for me, it's kind of like mind blown, okay? This is the camera that I choose to use for B-roll, for talk ahead, all that stuff because the image quality is so good, but I don't expect any camera to be perfect, okay? And I want to segue into that. Yeah, the ZVE one has some arguably gimmicky features that a lot of y'all might not be interested in. I'm not interested in some of them, right? So things like frame and stabilizer, I don't really care. Things like cinematic mode, I don't really care. Things like auto framing, I do use from time to time, but it's not a necessity. I don't have to have it. But those things are good to have in addition to the other vlog stuff that the ZV cameras have. So background defocus, product showcase mode, all of that good stuff. My point is, is the features are there if you want to use them, but if not, you can just freaking turn them off. But with that being said, I also don't expect any camera, and I'm, I'm bringing this back around full circle. I don't expect any camera that I use to be perfect. And I need to say this in every video because if we were to get the perfect camera that had every single little thing that we freaking wanted out of a camera we would be paying $25,000 for a camera so y'all have to remember that when it comes to price points features and stuff like that trade-offs do have to be made sometimes and we get all of the sauce image quality wise autofocus wise AI wise with the ZVE1 and the trade-off that we have to accept is it's not the best ergolo ergonomically ergonomically um, it only has a single car slide it's got micro HDMI it's a little cheap fill in the rear monitor ain't that good but I'm willing to accept those things to get all of the benefits of this little pocket rocket and again I'm using an internal mic and it sounds amazing so you know what some of y'all probably wonder well what do active stabilization look like Terry you showed us dynamic but what does active look like when I'm not trying to hold the freaking camera steady so I'm gonna take a moment and walk over to blue magic yes my daughter named my motorcycle blue magic I'm gonna flip this around and show her to you okay Okay, so first question you have is, Terry, why are you showing this? This freaking motorcycle. We don't care, and that is fair, but I wanted to show y'all, this is what I got rid of, the FX34. It's only a 2007, so it's older. Was it wasn't that expensive? Still in really good shape. It's a 600. Way more than enough freaking power for me. I have a family, so I can't be out here doing crazy stuff, and this thing is a literal death trap. But the other thing I want to say is all of this stuff is fine, okay? The bike is cool. I like my truck, but I try not to be fixated on material things and I, I don't really show off the things that I have or that I've uh, acquired because I never want to be in a position where I'm using money or something I own, whether it be one of these, which is, you know, these aren't even that expensive or cameras or anything like that. So I'm always making sure that I'm in a position of gratefulness. I do not have to have any of this stuff. And I'm so thankful that God has provided things to me in abundance and to my family in abundance. So always remember, no matter what you own, no matter what you buy, no matter how much freaking money you have, what you own, what you possess do not define you if you're a crappy person none of this whatever kind of car you drive i don't care if you drive for lamborghini you stay in a million dollar house none of it means anything if you're not gracious you're not grateful and you're a crappy person so make sure in all circumstances that you keep those things in line i'm into cameras video games vehicles some of y'all be buying two three thousand dollar pair of gucci shoes i don't be mad at y'all do i everybody has their freaking vice that they like and this is the stuff that i like but i did want to show you blue magic because i made a whole video about selling my fx34 bike and this is the fruits of it the next question is Terry, do you regret selling the FX3 and only using the ZVE1? And to be honest, that answer is no. I'll put the camera back on me. And the ZVE1 should have switched the audio back to the front. But I don't regret it at all. Ooh, a little overexposed. I don't regret it because the ZVE1 is giving me all the image quality benefits, the 
all, all of the resolutions, codex and all that stuff in a smaller form factor that doesn't look as freaking expensive okay and i need to say that because i talked about how the camera felt cheap earlier but i also said that there was a pro in that and the pro is whenever i took out my freaking fx3 that camera looks like hey steal me i cost a lot of money the zve1 looks inconspicuous and it looks like any other 800 dollars 1000 dollars camera although it costs 2300 freaking dollars so anyways that is the reason why i don't regret selling the fx3 if I ever go back on a paid job where it's required, I'll rent one, or who knows, I might end up buying another one down the road. But right now, I'm totally content with using the ZVE-1 as my main content creation camera, paired with this 16 to 35 millimeter F4 GPZ. I, you know what, these names are gonna be the death of me. But anyways, this camera, this lens combo is more than enough for majority of my needs, even when it comes to photos. 12 megapixel photos for social, which is honestly what I take photos for on a day-to-day -day basis, just, you know, gym pictures, pictures of vehicles, stuff like that. It's more than enough, okay? If I, if, I, if I go somewhere where I have higher megapixel needs, I'll take my Sony a7 IV. And I know everybody does have that luxury, I do thankfully, but with that being said, 12 megapixels has never been limiting for me. The only thing that's required with a 12 megapixel photo is that you take more time thinking about your composition because you don't have as much cropping ability. Other than that, it's still a fantastic photo camera. So, I might have missed some things. This is just kind of like a vlog about why this camera combo for me is the perfect vlog and content creation camera. And I'm very curious to know what y'all think down in the description. Share your thoughts. If I missed anything, Go ahead, cook me. I know how y'all gonna do. I'm, 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 I'm cool. I'm ready for it. Okay. Till next time, I'm out here. Tight shirt, tail, walking. Piece of chicory, I'm out. Peace.